Nigeria's huge infrastructure deficit requires long-term capital and sustainable financing. One area that has provided immense opportunities is leasing, also known as Ijara in non-interest finance. This investment is open to all, irrespective of religion, as it offers direction and guidance to socially responsible businesses that benefit the society and aligns with Sharia principles. Hello and welcome to the Islamic Finance Weekly where we discuss key developments in the non-interest finance market. This edition of the program will discuss Ijara and its economic benefits for Nigeria. The focus here will be to discuss Ijara as a key element in supporting leasing for key sectors and how significant investment can transform Nigeria's socio-economic landscape. Joining us from Abuja is Mr. Atayiru Masido, the founder and CEO of 117 Capital Limited. Good morning, Mr. Atayiru. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Pukula. Good morning, everybody. You're welcome. Now, let us talk about Ijara as it is one of the prominent contracts in the rental-based category of the non-interest banking services. Give us your thoughts on the concept of Ijara in the non-interest market. Yeah, the concept of Ijara, as we know, of course, is lease. However, unlike the conventional lease, it is referring to the operating lease because in conventional, we have operating lease and we have finance lease. An operating lease is where the asset will be legally owned by the lessor and it will not transfer to the lessee. Whereas the finance lease is the lease, yes, the asset belongs to the so, but automatically it will transfer to the lessee. However, in Islamic finance, Ijara, it mimics actually the operating lease where the asset belongs to the lessor and there will not be two contracts into the Ijara, meaning the sales contract at the end of the Ijara and the Ijara itself. It has to be independent Ijara contract alone. So the, the asset will still retain as the legal ownership of the lessor. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Atayiru. Well noted and very instructive on the concept of Ijara as it's one of the prominent contracts in the rental base category. So in terms of developing product for investment and finance, what are the key types of Ijara and how do they apply to the emerging economies like Nigeria? In terms of we have an Ijara where the asset exists, we have an Ijara as it will be existing, we have an Ijara for the services, not actually tangible asset, but the services that can be rendered. So for instance, in the federal government of Nigeria, SUKUP that was issued in 2017, 2018, and the most recent one of 2020, the Ijara Mausufa which is the forward list, was used, meaning the asset, such as the roads that the federal government wants to construct, are not readily available, but will be available in certain period in, in the future. So that is actually Ijara Mausufa Firdema. There is also Ijara wa Iktina, where the asset may be in existence immediately, but it will transfer to the lessee at the end of the Ijara, where after Ijara concluded, then the sales agreement will be executed and transfer the legal ownership to the lessee. We also have series of other ijaras that can be for services, such as if we have any uh, educational activities, we know education is services, we know health is services. If there is any organizations that are providing these services, can also issue ijara in line with that services they are rendering. So ijara varies and it depends on the asset that the lessee is trying to acquire. And that is the reason why actually it is so favorable and it is so common in terms of Islamic finance generally and globally. All right, thank you, Mr. Atayiru, for taking us through the types of Ijara and how important they are to the economic development. So for market like Nigeria, how critical is the development of the legal framework and documentations to effectively operationalize Ijara in compliance with Sharia principles? Well, the issue of a uh, legal framework, actually, it is very critical in any economy as long as Islamic finance is yet to take off. But here in Nigeria, because at least we have Islamic finance, we have 
banks that were licensed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. And we have organizations like uh, like uh, 117 Capital licensed by Securities and Exchange Commission as a fund manager. We already have the legal structures, legal framework to do all the Islamic finance contract, including the Ijara. So as a result of that, actually, with respect to the legal framework, it is very critical. But here in Nigeria, we already have the legal framework, such as the the, the non-interest financial uh, guidelines released by the Central Bank of Nigeria has already mentioned Ijara as one of the contracts to be done. Also, the Securities and Exchange Commission's Sukuk rules and regulations issued uh, release in 2013 has also listed Ijara as one of the favorable contracts that can be used in order to issue Sukuk. Likewise, with respect to the Securities and Exchange Commission, Islamic Fund uh, rules and regulations also mention Ijara. So with respect to the legal framework, we do have legal framework in Nigeria. It's unlike Ghana, where they are just trying to develop actually their legal framework at the moment. But it is critical for any economy that wants to do Islamic finance and Ijara in particular must have the legal framework. All right, so from what you talk about, the legal framework and documentation of contracts is highly recommended on accuracy, integrity, and must comply with Sharia principles. Thank you very much for those Absolutely. insights. So investors have expressed concerns over the expenses that are incurred in Ijara. So share with us, from your perspective, how these issues can be addressed. Well, the issue of expenses in Ijara, of course, is very critical, especially the financial institutions that is financing the Ijara assets. I give you an example of somebody who wants to, who wants the bank, for instance, to 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 uh, to give him a car in a form of a lease. For that Islamic bank, they must go and acquire this car from the vendor before they give it out to the customer they must register the car at least have make sure they have a plate number uh, they must also uh, get takaful that is the islamic insurance to cover the risk related to that because the asset belongs to the islamic finance islamic bank like i explained to you so these expenses actually are going to be factored as part of the total cost of the asset so definitely it is a concern to the customers to the invest to the investors but as far as the bank is concerned they are doing it to protect their investment because the car belongs to the bank so they have to make sure they they, they actually cover it up with the insurance as well as register it and get all the necessary license that uh, the car is supposed to move on the road so definitely the islamic banks must do must say must, must put all these expenses in the total cost of the vehicle to be leased out as an Ijara asset. All right. So in terms of the securitization of Ijara and the determination of rental practical aspects and issues of Ijara, so what are the practical steps for implementing it as an ideal mode for vehicle fixed assets and machinery asset financing? Okay, thank you so much. Just like the way I explained to you, if for instance, a, somebody wants to acquire a vehicle or somebody wants to acquire machineries or somebody wants to acquire assets. These are all assets that can be used in order to finance through Ijara. Now approaching the Islamic Bank, the Islamic Bank will do their due diligence and credit analysis and make sure that this particular customer has the credit worthiness actually to be financed this particular car. So then they will go to the vendor and purchase the car and then pass the car to the to the customer in the form of Ijara contracts. So with respect to all this, there are process that the Islamic Bank must go into together with the customer in order to make sure that they acquire the, the car as well as lease the car to him. Then of course, issue to do is securitization of this particular uh, cash flow that will come from the Ijara asset to the financial institutions that has financed it. Or maybe if the financial institutions, they want to also turn back in a secondary market, sells their ownership of this particular asset to somebody, a third person, for instance. Then they have to actually securitize this particular cash flow that will come from the assets in order to give it out to whoever is coming as a new investor to the school who is going to be the new owner of the asset through the securitization process to the third party. So this risk is shared between the borrowers and the lenders? The risk related to the Ijara, we should know that first, the asset belongs 
to the, to the lender, if we want to call it that way, who is the financier. Now, the asset belongs to him. All the necessary issues related to the risk of this particular asset must be on the head of the lender, who is the financier. If it is a house and all of a sudden a wild wind come and blow off the roof of the house, then definitely it is the owner of the house who is the financier that must bear that risk. But of course, in his Islamic bank must calculate all this risk and find out what can I do in order to protect myself with respect to this particular risk. What I can do is actually to buy a, a, a Takaful product who to participate into the Takaful and ask a Takaful company to come and give me cover. And a Takaful is an Islamic insurance to come and give me cover in case there is a wild wind that is going to blow off my roof, come and repair it. Then the Takaful will come. So there is expenses in relation to this particular Takaful that definitely must be factored by the lender or by, by, by the financier into the total cost of the asset that would definitely then thereafter pass to the customer who is going to be the lessee. Well, so okay. definitely it is going to be shared by the two, but uh, that is how the structure is. All right, Mr. Tai, talking about risk management component for the Islamic mode of financing Ijara. So what are the major risks to its adoption in Nigeria? When we are talking about Ijara or any other Islamic contracts, each one actually they have risk. Even though a lot of people are saying they, they are, are, are doing misconstruction, saying that the risk or uncertainties are conflicting the risk as well as uncertainties, as we are calling it, garar in Islamic finance, that as long as you have garar in a transaction, you shouldn't go into it. However, when it comes to the risk, definitely it is, we even have a legal maxim in Islamic finance that is saying he who bear the risk will also bear the profit. So as a result of that, there is risk when it comes to definitely the contracts that we have in Islamic finance. So with respect to this particular risk identified by the financier, must identify in every single stage of the contract, such as Ijara, there is risk. For instance, first stage, of a customer approaching a bank to purchase a car. Definitely, the bank must review the credit worthiness of the customer and find him to be worthy, then he must go to the, to the vendor and purchase this particular car. If for any chance, the bank decided to go to the vendor and purchase this particular car and comes out and then because of the legal issue in Islamic finance that you must, you cannot sell what you don't have. So the bank must appear legally this particular uh, car before tra before transferring the beneficial interest to the customer. By the time the bank has already acquired this car and the customer decided to say, I'm no longer interested, there is risk related to that for the bank. Mm -hmm. So how can the bank mitigate this particular risk? What the bank can do to mitigate this risk is to assign the customer to act as an agent that will go and make sure that they, they supervise the car and they take the delivery on behalf of the bank. Then they transfer it to it. So that is how the bank can mitigate this particular risk. Then there is also risk in relation to what will happen to the car if it if it damaged, if it is being stolen, and other things. Another risk there. The car belongs to the bank. So the, the bank must also make sure that they, they, they ensure the car through a takaf, which is the insurance company that Sharia compliant. So that if anything happens to this particular car, at least the insurance company will come and salvage the bank and pay off whatever the damage the car has done actually with respect to that. They can manage that aspect. What about the issue of default? In case the lessee is not able to pay another risk that the Islamic bank can also face, what can they provide? They can decide to say, give me a third party guarantor who will come and salvage your issue whenever you cannot pay i'll go to him and knock his door and tell him to come and pay me my rentals that is due that you're supposed to pay me so that in every stage of the ijara there are risks that the financier the lesser supposed to look at it and analyze and see how can he mitigate that particular risk hmm. thank you so this risk can be managed through a um, takafu facility like islamic insurance absolutely, absolutely yes Thank you very much, Mr. Atayewu. So Nigeria has a debatable statistic when it comes to housing deficits. Share with us the opportunity for leveraging Sukuk for housing and construction finance in Nigeria. Thank you so much, Mbola, for that question. Now, the issue in relation to housing, like you said, is actually so concerned to Nigeria. At least many statistics are saying 17 million housing, some are even taking it up to 21 million, 21 million housing. 
a very huge sector indeed and of course opportunity for those financiers so we've uh, witnessed actually many organizations that are coming doing a private school in order to raise funds so that they can go and do the the financing of the school i give you an example there is a company called manzua ventures that approach the nigerian immigration services that they want to actually build 4,000 houses for the staff of the Nigerian Immigration Services. And the Nigerian Immigration Services are interested in this. Amanzo well approached us as 117 Capital to see how we can issue a private hook and we've structured it. And the deduction from the uh, participants or from the off takers are going to be deducted from the source, from their salary in the Accountant General of the Federation, that is through the IPPIS. So as a result of that, we are able to structure a school to raise funds for these 4,000 houses for the Nigerian Immigration Services. Apart from that, we also witnessed Family Homes Funds Limited, a company that was incorporated for social housing farm, uh, homes. Actually, they came to the market in order to raise 10 billion naira so that they can go and continue building the social houses for the uh, for affordable houses. And they were able to get 21 billion naira. They had to even decline 11 billion and take only 10 billion as a result of this one. So yes, there are a lot of opportunities in terms of the housing because of the deficiency, but it is also an opportunity. And scope can be there actually to salvage all this issue. I'm aware about the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria that are also trying to, they are building their capacity and they are also trying to see how they can raise scope for the affordable houses as they are doing. I'm also aware of, about the Nigerian Mortgage Refinancing Company, which is the NMRC. Also, they are doing that. So these are all entities that are coming together to, because of the challenges to see how they can raise scope in order to raise funds for the construction of the affordable houses. I will say that for the cook market to thrive, a conducive environment that will support the cook issuance, promote corporate governance, ensure fair, transparent, and even efficient market and safeguard investors' prote protections is vital. Thank you very much, Mr. Atayiru Masido. That was an insightful section on Ijara and its value to the Nigerian economy. Enjoy the rest of the day. It's my pleasure. Well, thank you so much. Have a nice day. There is a nexus between infrastructure and economic development as Nigeria seeks to address its infrastructure financing gap. It is clear that there are opportunities for tapping into well structure Ijara leasing models. And that brings us to the end of today's program. Visit ProShendu.com for Islamic finance news report and analysis. Click on Web TV banking channel to watch the Islamic finance weekly videos. You can also engage us on our social media platform displaying on the screen. See, we come your way next week Friday. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.